three. Hey, welcome to another episode of Rock Fantasy Files. And uh, we're here uh, kind of to promote the local Orange County Fair here in Middletown, New York. Uh, they've been bringing in uh, concerts again. And we've got a band called Beach Floyd that's doing a Pink Floyd tribute. And it's their first time coming to the New York area, as far as I know, unless you played like New York City, but to the Orange County Fair. A little bit about the fair this year. They're bringing in a bunch of tribute acts. And you guys are actually, I'm looking at my notes, you guys are actually playing on July 17th. Uh, somebody else is coming in the room. You guys didn't tell me we were missing someone. Oh, um, yeah, welcome aboard. Yeah, Nick, our saxophone player. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, anyhow, welcome. We've got uh, we've got some members of the band, uh, Beach Floyd, and they are a Pink Floyd tribute hailing from the Virginia Beach, Virginia area. And uh, welcome, everyone. How, why don't we have you guys introduce yourselves and what you do in the band? All right. Um, if you guys don't mind, I'll start. My name's Tom Zimmerman. I'm lead vocals and guitar. Um, well, let's move right along. John? Uh, John Bowman. I'm uh, keyboards and vocals. Awesome. Um, Dave Solis. I'm the. I'm Dave Solis. I'm the bass player. Nice. Uh, Nick Flores, saxophone. Awesome. And Steve, and, I'll, I'll, I'll mention we've got two two folks that couldn't make it here tonight. Uh, Vince DeRosa is our drummer, and then Kevin Mitchell is our lead guitar player. And one of my questions for you guys is: Let's chat about the band and uh, how long have you guys been together as a as a Pink Floyd uh, act? Could be back. We've been, we've been together for about five and a half years now. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And and do you usually tour all around the nation, or are you mainly based in the southeast, or uh... we, we we stick primarily to the uh, the mid Atlantic area. Okay. So you're right. This will be our first time up in New York, and we're uh, pretty excited about that. And uh, yeah, of course, the upcoming gig at the Orange County Fair, you'll be there on July 17th as part of this lineup. I mean, on the 15th, they got a Metallica tribute battery. On the 16th, they have a Bon Jovi tribute, and they have you guys. And that weekend, they, they round it off with a Van Morrison tribute. The following week, they have Rush with Rush Hour. They have ACDC with Livewire. They have Kiss with Kiss Nation, just like a stacked lineup of like cool music to go see because we've all been, as you guys, locked into this pandemic and not being able to see any live music. So I'm hoping these turnouts are great. And of course, this rounds out the final weekend. They have a Kid Rock tribute, a Guns N' Roses, an Iron Maiden, the Iron Maidens who I've seen before, and a Van Halen tribute. So it's a stacked lineup of great music at the Orange County Fair. And it'll be... Yeah, We've, the Machine played there a couple of years ago, which is a, a, a Pink Floyd-based tribute you guys may have heard about that is based up in the Northeast, and they've been around for many years, and great, really uh, great show that was. And uh, what made you guys form a Pink Floyd tribute? You guys obviously are Pink Floyd fans. Yeah, it started, um, I think I had just finished another project, and I was looking for other musicians to kind of just group up with. And that's when I met our keyboard player, John, and we kind of just um, started talking about our influences, what kind of music we liked. And I, you know, I quickly found out that he was even more of a Pink Floyd fan than I was, which I found just baffling. I thought I was like the biggest Pink Floyd fan around. And this guy, you know, blew me out of the water. So we just started talking about music and, you know, decided, hey, why don't we just mess around and try a Pink Floyd cover thing and just see what happens. And, um, you know, over the next, you know, a few weeks and months, we kind of found some other like-minded musicians that were as passionate about Pink Floyd as we were, and it all just kind of came together a little too easily, and uh, at the rest is history. Here we are today. Obviously, it's not the easiest band to uh, recreate on stage, you know. It's not For like, sure, yeah. not putting down any other bands, but Pink Floyd, and uh, it's, it's a very intricate and very precise sound, and yeah we've, def yeah, we've definitely come across some, you know, some pitfalls and some obstacles along the way of some things that we had to overcome and some things we had to incorporate uh, into the band to make sure that we got the correct, you know, accurate sound because we want to make sure that when we're playing Pink Floyd for the fans that we're, we're doing it justice and we're giving them everything that they came to see, you know, the guitar solos, the keyboard solos, the mm -hmm. lights, the visuals, you know, all the, all the production that goes into a Pink Floyd show. 
and uh, we're mentioning lights, and I was going to mention that because sometimes, of course, Pink Floyd is always synonymous with a light show, and you guys bring a pretty good uh, light show along with at the show, at the we concert. Do, do, do. Yes. Okay, because I've, I've seen like the laser light Pink Floyd stuff and all that stuff. Of course, over, I'm an old guy, so I've been around. I, I got to see the wall movie when it was in the theater. That's how old I am. <laughs> We actually just, you just, we just did the wall last week. We, we performed the wall in its entirety at a local uh, live music venue in Virginia Beach. And we, had, we did it to these crazy visuals and lights. It was, it was a really was uh, awesome. epic performance. Yeah, if anybody listening to this podcast wants to go see some videos from that, you can you know, check out our Facebook page. We've got some stuff up there. Definitely, for sure. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people would like to check out the band before they go to the show or even, I mean, we're, we're talking to people from all around the world on this channel. We're not, to, like, I'm kind of narrowing it down to like a Middletown area, which is, we have a lot of followers there, but this uh, pod, uh, vlog, uh, not a podcast, a vlog has really taken off around the world. So yeah, definitely, guys, if you're into Pink Floyd, check out, and how do we find you guys? Uh, you have a Facebook page, you have a regular website too, correct? We, yeah, we have a Facebook page. You can just do a search for Beach Floyd. You'll find us. We're on Instagram. You can just look at Beach Floyd. And you can also go to www.beachfloyd.com. And that's our website where you can find all of our bios and our upcoming uh, upcoming shows, and some, uh, some, some audio and media clips. So uh, as you guys go out and decide what songs to play, do you guys kind of touch on all eras of the band? Yeah, we try to we try to put out a very diverse uh, set list every time we play, ranging from the early stuff to some of the later stuff. Definitely hit the big, you know, the big key songs that everybody wants to hear. You know, you're comfortably numb. Yeah, a lot of dark side, a lot of you know, wish you were here. Um, but we try to mix it up every now and then and throw in some uh, sprinkle in some uh, some songs for those diehard fans that want to hear, you know, maybe something off metal or animals or oh yeah animals is a great album one of my yeah favorites. we like we like to hear like you know we, we'll play something uh we you know, we play sheep is one of our you know favorite songs to play and it's just it always baffles me when a lot of times we play there's a lot of folks in the crowd that are just novice pink floyd fans or maybe they don't even know who pink floyd is but I always like those, I always like seeing those people that are you know standing there, hands in the air, dancing, singing along to every single word. You know, every single we were just playing a show the other night, and there was this young girl in the crowd. She was probably like 22, 23 years old, and she was sure. singing every single word to uh, to all the songs. And it's just it's it's cool just seeing that. I, yeah. Um, so I, yeah, of course, like some of the earlier stuff that I, I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't even really discover the Sid Barrett era. And now I've become more of a fan of it as I gotten older. You know, I kind of just listened to the staples of Dark Side and Wish You Were Here and of course the wall and stuff like that. Then I, I actually discovered the earlier material later on, like loving stuff like Astronomy the Mind, which the Mighty Voivod uh, covered years ago and the metal scene and kind of brought people into that yeah, we just had Voivod on the channel a few weeks ago, if you guys are familiar with them at all. But uh, yeah, and uh, I'm going to ask each one of you, I'm going to put you all on the spot. What are your five favorite Pink Floyd albums and or songs, if you don't want to do albums? Let's we'll see. Y'all want me to start? I'll start. Um, Tom, you're leading the pack. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, I'll give you all time to think, so I'll go ahead and go off the top of the dome here. Of course, my answer will probably change tomorrow, but um, my favorite song has always been a, uh, always been Time. Time's always had a special place for me. Um, coming Back to Life, um, Dogs off of Animals. Is there anybody out there off the wall? That's a good one. And we'll, we'll go a fifth year, we'll say Shiny Crazy Diamond. Okay. I'm actually just getting a text from uh, Ron that I, Ron booked the show and I, he's going to come on at nine o'clock. I'm going to interview uh, Rush Hour. So I said okay. he didn't think I was going to be out in time. Uh, who wants to go next? Nick? Uh, John? Uh, I would say for me, of course, all the saxophone songs, of course, because you be like money, you know, us and them. Uh, also, uh, Shot in your crazy diamond. Uh, 
anything from Animals. That's like my favorite album. And uh, I like the the I like Echoes too. That's a great song. I really like Echoes a lot too. I forgot to say that one, man. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my answer, Steve. Change it around. You're, you're free to change it around. <laughs> It'll be a test later. Yeah, yeah. A test yeah. later, yeah. Dave, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so it's like it's tough to narrow it down to songs, but I mean, my favorite song to play live is uh, is Pigs. Uh, that's that's always a great one. It always gets the crowd worked up, even the people that really aren't familiar with the Animals album. It's, you know, you, you, you see people getting down on that one. and It's always a good time for me. Uh, but I mean, album wise, it's I could it changes constantly depending on what I'm in the mood for. But mm -hmm. if I had to nail down two, I'd say Animals and Obscured by Clouds. And Obscured by Clouds is just one of those albums that very few people really know about because it came right before Dark Side. And it was a soundtrack album that never really got fully used in the in the movie it was written for. Yeah. So it's just kind of lost. But it's really got that turning point um, where things started to cement into the Dark Side era and beyond there. And the songs on there are really great. Excellent, excellent. And uh, John? I guess that uh, rounds out the panel here. Uh, I'd say my my favorite song to play live uh, and just in general is uh, Shine On You Crazy Diamond. Wow. Uh, you know, parts one through nine, every single one, they each have their own significance um, to me, uh, especially as a keyboardist, because it's, it's a very keyboard heavy song. And so sure. I get to do... I get to do the cool, you know, synth leads. I get to do the nice organ work. I get to jam on the, you know, electric piano. So it's just a really fun song for me. Um, and then, of course, uh, any color you like. Um, again, you know, keyboard solos and stuff. Um, uh, echoes. And uh, then I'd say dogs. And... Um, you know, I'm not really sure about the fifth one. I, I'd say in a pinch, half a cigar. Okay. I'll yeah. say if anybody is interested in coming and checking out this show, it's worth the price of admission to watch this guy play any color you like. I'm telling you right there. That's my favorite. That's like my favorite part of any show is this guy uh, crushing the, uh, the keyboard solos on any color. So. And I tell you, for, I mean, this concert is actually a free concert. So all you got to do is pay to get in the Orange County Fair. And I don't really know exactly how much it is to get in the fair this year because they didn't even have one last year. And I think it's usually on 10 bucks. So what can you go wrong? I mean, there's a circus, there's Pink Floyd, there's, yeah. you know, uh, whatever else. Monkeys racing dogs, I heard they're going to have. And, uh, of course, all the fair food and the rides and everything else. And. What the heck, last year we were denied all that stuff, especially here in New York State. You couldn't go out and do anything. Yeah. How's your response of, uh, in Virginia? Were you guys totally locked down last year? Were you guys able to play shows? No. Oddly, enough, oddly enough, despite all the restrictions, we still had a pretty decent year as far as uh, shows oh. go. Um, okay. You know, everything was different, of course. A lot of stuff was you know, either outside or if it was inside, it was, you know, sectioned off by tables and everybody had to wear a mask and, you know, yeah. social distancing. So it was definitely very unique in a sense, you know, it wasn't like anything we had done before, but we still, there was still quite a demand for us to, uh, you know, to play around the area. So things, things were actually not that bad. I'm uh, friendly with uh, another tribute band, Almost Queen, that uh, really had taken off. They've been a band for quite a long time and they were doing some stuff last summer. They were doing like, I know they go all around, but they're based up in here in New York. Randy Gregg, of course, is uh, in the band, and he's former Thin Lizzy and whatnot. And uh, they were playing a lot of drive-in concerts last year where they drive in and they were setting up like the outside. I know in uh, Wilkes-Barre, they sit outside a casino and they set up out there and they you had to you know, pay for a car load to pull in. So it was great that some bands got to do stuff like that last year because there's a lot, especially in the heavy metal community, which we're kind of more based in, we didn't get to do anything. I mean, it's a lot yeah, easier to listen to Pink Floyd than it is to Exodus or Slayer or something, too. So. It, I think it, it, the pandemic really tested uh, everybody's creativity. I, you know, I saw a lot of bands doing creative things to you know, yeah. continue playing music, live streams, and like you said, drive-ins. Drive so it's, you know. 
And uh, well, there's a will, there's a way. You guys have done some gigs this year already. It sounded like you were, we were mentioning before. Yeah, and are these kind of like normal setup gigs that you guys are playing down in Virginia area now? And how's the, how's the crowd response? A lot of people coming out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every time we play, we get it. We draw a huge so crowd. Cool. But there's always the point with like the pandemic. It looks like it's ending now, but you still have a lot of people that are hesitant to go out and they're still afraid and they're watching the news and there's a new this coming and there's a new that. Yeah. I'm just hoping that, you know, the fairgrounds does well with this. And I don't see how it couldn't because you guys, it's going to be some great music for a very cheap price and it's going to be a cheap night out. And I think there's enough. I think there's enough people who are just done with this whole thing, and they're just yeah, ready. True, to, you know, true. I agree. Put their agree. hair down and just you know, rock out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How long of a set shall we expect at the Orange County Fair from you guys? We've been playing for three hours. Uh, so you do you do like an intermission, sort of like a headliner? Well, yeah, we'll, we'll do we'll do a, you know a set, and then we'll take a short break, and we'll come back out and uh, yeah, just lay the hammer down. You can go walk around and get a candy apple and ride the roller coaster yeah. and come back. And first yeah, just enough time to go grab a funnel cake or something and then we'll yeah. <laughs> get right back on stage. I guess uh, another question I'd have for all you guys, what what are one of the hardest songs to perform uh, of Pink Floyd? And I go, we have four different members here and what are the hardest song to learn or, uh, you know, you kind of said some of your favorite ones and uh, maybe we could touch on that. I'll Bye. say... I'll say that the hardest one to play live uh, is the uh, the beginning of Sheep when I've got the, the Tom and Kevin making sheep noises into the microphones. <laughs> and it's cracking me up, but I'm trying to. We don't have a boy. We don't have the budget yet to bring a live sheep on stage, so we have to get. <laughs> well, well, hey, you are playing the Orange County Fair. They may have live sheep. Oh yeah, there, there you go. We'll, we'll, we'll get there early and see what we got to work with, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you're doing dogs, I've got a volunteer here. Daisy might, uh, you know, let a couple of howls out, you know. <laughs> and my mascot's Daisy had to make an appearance. She pulled a skunk earlier today, so. Had the skunk bath at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some, what are some other songs that are, uh, I mean, every, a lot of the songs are challenging, you know, in so many different ways. Um, some of the songs with interesting timings or a lot of uh, a lot of ho vocal harmonies you know we spend a lot of time you know rehearsing and trying to get make sure we've got them down got them down right cool cool i'll say a challenging aspect uh as a bass player is with pink floyd you had you know depending on the album and the era you had two guys playing bass it was either roger waters or david gilmore uh on the albums it wasn't always roger waters doing the bass lines and a lot of times you can tell just by the complexity of it. If it was a Gilmore baseline, then you're getting worked out a little bit. Whereas if it was a Waters baseline, it's a little bit more, a little bit more simple and melodic, but yeah, the Gilmore stuff like um, have a cigar is one of them. It's like, you're all over the place on there or, or pigs is another good example of that. It's just, yeah, it's a, it's a whole world away from some of the other songs. So it's a little bit less consistent than it would be with a, with any other band. Another um, thing too is, um, you know, with Pink Floyd, people have been listening to these songs for years and years and years, and they know these songs like the back of their hands. So you have to get it, you have to get it correct. You know, there's no, there's not a lot of room for improvisation. Um, you know, you go to play a guitar solo, you better, you better hit those licks, you better hit those notes because people in the crowd, they're, you know, they're, they're mouthing the solo as you're playing it. So, you know, don't, don't yeah. trust people in the course, you know. It, there's a lot of trust to it. It's like the audience entrusts you with this work to do it, to do it right. And you got to live up to that. And that's a bit of a challenge there, but that's also what makes it fun. Yeah. And uh, I think it's great that there's bands out doing this tribute acts. You know, you get some people, ah, it's a tribute act. Who wants to go see that? I said, well, who can go see Pink Floyd in 2021? Yeah. I mean, you can't. This is all you got. I mean, and I, I mean, of course, some bands you can still go see, but I, I really enjoy going to see tribute bands. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not knocking this at all. I dig it. So, uh, one thing I'd like to see, I'd like to see a tribute band for a band that still plays. Well, I, <laughs> I just think I think that'd be hilarious if there was like a Foo Fighters tribute band. <laughs> well, I can say there's a whole list of them that are coming to the fair. The Metallica, the Battery, who actually opened up for actual Metallica. Of course, Bon Jovi's still weird. Uh, uh, 
ACDC. They really, they really uh, open up for Metallica. The Metallica. I, I mean, the only one, there's only a couple on here that aren't actually active still. Uh, Kid Rock's still active, of course. Guns N' Roses. Oh, geez, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Uh, really? Like Iron Maiden, because they're the Iron Maidens. They're the fem all female Iron Maiden tribute. And Van Halen, of course, you know, rest in peace, Eddie, who we lost last year. And I think that's another one that's going to be a hard one to tell. You, the, you got to play Eddie Van Halen and David Lee Roth on stage. It's going to, um, yeah, David yeah, Lee Roth might yeah. be a little easier than Eddie. But, I wouldn't mind checking that one out. That, that, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Not till, it's not till August 1st. So, and the night after you guys play is Van Morrison, so I don't know. <laughs> who's, the classic, classic rock weekend kind of, but, who's, the uh, night, who's the night before us? Slippery uh, Wet. Um, a the Bon Jovi tribute, yeah. Slippery and Wet. Yeah. yeah. All right. But, uh, and the two nights before he has Metallica, then the Rush, who I'm interviewing a little bit later, another one of my favorite bands, of course. Another band you can't go see anymore. But I, I do a Rock Fantasy's anniversary party almost every year up here in Middletown. And we, we've been running that with always tribute acts. We have a British Steel, a Judas Priest tribute we've brought with, Sado, which is Ozzy Osbourne tribute, and uh, Sanctuary, which is an Iron Maiden tribute. And man, people don't care if those bands are still around. It's just fun to go out and hear great music performed by, you know, people and just bonding with the music, I think. So, I don't know, anything else we'd like to add to the episode and anything else we want to talk about the band or the performance coming up? I guess uh, I yeah, I mean, just, you know, I encourage everyone to come out. It's, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be an amazing show. Oh, you know, we really try to, you know, do Pink Floyd right. And, you know, two of the members that aren't here today, uh, Kevin Mitchell is our amazing lead guitar player. And, and uh, I'll tell you what, man, I, I, even if David Gilmore himself came knocking on the door wanting to play with us, I don't, I don't know if I'd let him in because this guy is so oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I, hey, no, this, this guy is so good. Um, and Vince is our, our drummer. He's just, you know, an amazing drummer. Um, every, everybody, in this, everybody in this band is just fantastic, really. I can't, I can't speak highly enough about them. So hopefully everyone comes out and has a great time. And uh, you know, they, like I said, you can like us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Yeah, check sure. For sure. And we'll, we'll put those links also in the video description on the YouTube. And uh, is anyone old enough in this panel to actually have seen Pink Floyd live? Nick? I'm old enough, but I, 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 I didn't get to see him live. Okay. I got to so, see him. I came from a very small town in rural North Carolina, so. Uh, and they didn't, didn't tour there too often, right? No, they didn't come there. I know I'll speak for myself, and I know John as well. We, we've both seen uh, Roger Waters and, okay. David, and David Gilmore. Um, yeah. But, 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 but I've, I've seen Pink Floyd in the 95, I saw him. Oh, what tour was that? It was, I, f I forget, it was, I saw him up in, um, up in Rhode Island when I was stationed up there. Oh, okay. In Foxborough. Or the I Patriots. Play. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw the Division Bell tour, and I think that was like 94. So it could have yeah, been. Yeah, that, 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 then that's it, Division Bell. Yeah, I saw that at uh, what, what we call MetLife Stadium, which is, used to be Giant Stadium years ago. I mean, it's a new stadium now, but in the Meadowlands by the New York City. No. But, but we saw we saw it was an outdoor concert because it was where the, the Patriots play Foxborough. Yeah, uh, that, that was a, yeah they were doing stadiums that whole that whole tour for sure. Yeah. I mean they're one of those bands that that did stadiums like the Stones and I mean Guns N' Roses are still doing stadiums somehow. I don't know, but they're still doing it. But, but we're seeing the end of the stadium rock bands and Pink Floyd definitely was one. Hey, I'd like to thank all you guys for joining us tonight, and I hope everybody comes out to the that, that's local that comes out to uh, Middletown, New York, at the Orange County Fair. And you can check out the Orange County Fair website and uh, Facebook page. And uh, I think they even have like a VIP package that you can actually pay a little bit extra to get up closer to the band. I don't know if you guys are aware of that or not, and I think it's some kind of a special bar or something going on. So, yep, so, we love it. Well, we look forward to seeing you in just a little over, I guess, about 10 days from now today. We're filming this on the 7th, and it's gonna, you guys are going to be here in Middletown on the 17th. And hopefully you guys can uh, sneak over and check out Rock Fantasy, the record shop, in the afternoon if you get up to town early enough. And, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll do. 
And uh, thanks for watching uh, this episode of Rock Fantasy Files. If you like what we're doing, please hit take a minute and hit subscribe. And uh, mention your favorite Pink Floyd songs. And we also did an episode on a Pink Floyd on Pink Floyd earlier this year in the winter, where we had a panel just talking about our favorite Pink Floyd uh, songs and and moments. So you guys can always dig back into the archives of the Rock Fantasy Files and check that out. And once again, thank everyone, and please go and. Uh, if you're not in Middletown, just go to their website and check them out. And uh, do you guys also sell merch? Do you have shirts and stuff like that? Or? We do, we do. We have the most comfortable t-shirt in all the world. Most comfortable, huh? Maybe I'm about to get one. Right? Yeah, oh yeah. I'm wearing my Rush shirt tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, thank you guys. And uh, I'll, I'll try, I'll share this over to your Facebook page. So if you guys want to, you know, get a little promotion and we'll share it around. All right? Yeah, thank you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, Stephen. Take it easy. Yeah, take care. We'll see you there at the Orange County Fair. It's the old commercial. <laughs> <laughs>